The Fullerton College Art Gallery has a new opportunity for students and visitors to experience a whole new world through art. Selected by both students and staff of the gallery, they're currently displaying a brand new exhibition called New Eyes. Their emphasis? It's to see art come to life. Welcome to the gallery at Fullerton College Art Gallery. This is our exhibition called New Eyes, Selections from the Fullerton College Art Collections. Did you know we had a collection on campus? We have sculptures outside, we have a mural in the 1400 building, and some of the selected artwork that is in this gallery comes from our collection. Each item was selected by a student or one of our professors in the Museum Studies program, and from Vaughn right here, who is our curator and interim director of the Museum Studies um, Gallery program. So each student picked an artwork and wrote about each artwork. So it's really exciting that these artworks are paired with the student who selected it. And they are our next future museum employees. So we're really excited about that. And now I'm gonna kick it over to Vaughn. And the name of the exhibition is New Eyes, which comes from something that my teacher, Wayne Tebow, would tell us when we study drawing or painting or art, the ultimate goal is that we acquire new eyes because we see the world differently, we see more, and we see sort of deeper in an artistic way. This is one of his paintings. Wayne Tebow was a visiting artist, our first visiting artist actually, in 1972. And as part of that visit, he donated this painting that's called Two Penny Machines. And it's two slot machines from a long time ago. And uh, one of the keys to understanding or appreciating that painting is that he paints his still life paintings from memory. So that in a sense, he's making it up. It's coming from his life experience, but he's not looking at a reference photo. And that forces him to rely on every resource that he's got and invent solutions to how to make that look interesting and beautiful. And so you get these things like electric blue shadows and kind of heightened reality. It's like reality, but it's sort of its own painted world. What made this exhibition so unique for Fullerton College and the FC Art Gallery is that each selection comes from the permanent collection on campus. Students and staff were able to go into the permanent collection and bring out things and display them based on what they meant to them personally, what called out to them to their feelings, and also what had a history with the individual themselves. We had different staff members kind of give us a layout on what each of these displays means to them and why they chose to display those specific selections. KBPK, Mark Pavlovich, and Joseph Pavlenko were both invited to go out there and react to the different displays and art themselves to see how it spoke to them. This is lithograph, which is pretty interesting. It's a word I do not even, I couldn't even tell you what lithography Well, it is. says here it's a method of printing using either a stone or a mental plate, so it's gonna be pressed. It's like an old timey printing press. Yeah, that's right. actually what it is. So it's going to be pressed when you look at it. And it tells you that you can get the visibility of something more. I like the fact that the one monkey is reaching across off the litho to two hand drawings on the left hand side of the print. Makes me think of uh, old uh, Looney Tunes where Bugs Bunny used to fight the uh, pencil and the artist in the cartoon. Yeah, and you look and you see what it's marked at, only 99 impressions. So a, a rare piece and Fullerton College is lucky to have it here at this display. So this work is by April Bay. She was our 2020 artist in residence. And um, I chose this piece because I had the privilege of, of spending a lot of time with April and with her work. This was uh, part of the exhibition that was locked in here during the pandemic and we kept it for quite a while so I really got to spend time with it. And I love that she raises all these questions. Uh, April is a, known as an Afrofuturist so she comes from the perspective of she is an alien from another planet and she's looking at these strange things we do on Earth. 
Um, so this is raising questions about a lot, of, a lot of earth practices that don't make any sense. So I love that. I love that it makes you think. This is a small little woodblock print by a great Japanese artist from the Edo period named, his last name is pronounced Hiroshige. And he's a master of the Japanese woodblock print, which was one of the highest art forms of that time and culture. And one of the things I love about it is how small it is, what a miniature picture it is, but how huge the scale is within that picture. So you're looking at this small little area, but it expands as you look at it and creates a kind of whole world. There's Mount Fuji, there's birds flying, there's smoke coming from a fire on a boat. There's different kinds of time happening as this bird flies towards you and that person in the back paddles past. It's a lot contained in a little, which is a magical achievement. For anybody who has lived in a city, and I'm seeing this as a city, we've all had a corner like this. This actually, I can actually take you to part of the middle of Anaheim and find a block that that looks like. And there's nothing like walking down the street. I know somebody's gonna say a, a liquor store in every corner. It's that liquor store. It's the one we all went to to get licorice, bubblegum cigarettes, root beer, and then when we thought we looked like we were 21, first time we snuck in and said, yeah, baby, I'll take that case of Budweiser. That's what, that my memories get hit like that. Well, you're not too far off, Mark. East Anaheim Street, Long Beach, California. There we go. Wow. Just the picture, knowing my generation, knowing how my generation feels and the sort of jokes people my age make, the dumpster fire speaks to me. Exactly. And exactly. then seeing that it happened, it was created in 2020, thinking about what we were all going through around that year, it, uh, well, uh, certainly was a time, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. And when you think about the way it looks at, I like the face, it sort of looks like us in the morning when we walked into the office. <laughs> no smile, just the baggy eyes is what I'm looking baggy at. Baggy eyes, the grimace, we probably need at least four more cups of coffee before we're functioning. And I've seen those flames come out of the top of your head before, so that's, that's very much close to home. This piece right here is unaccessioned, and what that means is it's in our collection, but we haven't brought it in we don't, because we don't know who the artist is. We don't know when it was created, but it's such a beautiful piece. And one of the students did select it and wrote about this without knowing anything about it, which is really, really exciting for this program and for the students that are learning how to write about art, because this is strictly written by aesthetic choice and what is in the painting without any information about the artist or the time that the artist painted or even where it was painted. So that's why I highlighted this one because I just think that's a brilliant um, concept that a student did for an artwork that is not accessioned in our collection. So that's really cool. Because I'm looking at it. Go ahead, keep going. Because uh, go ahead, tell me what you see. Oh, oh, in all seriousness? Yeah. I kind of get a candy skull vibe right there in the middle with that big old blob. Maybe some kind of weird frog with the bubbly eyes up there. Again, I'm getting fruit feelings with kind of those oblong shapes. Maybe I'm just hungry. That looks like an apple. I love this. This, for me, that's a face. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a face when you look at it coming down through the middle and the way the face looks distorted to me, that's the consciousness of the mind that we all used to have in the 60s. Confused, disillusioned, upset, <laughs> bizarre. What we weren't sure, and this is the outside of our world that we looked at. What was it? Where would we go? What could come into our mind? I know that's not what the artist created, but that's what I see in the artist's work 
on this. Six He's dazed, confused. Exactly. Exactly. It's fun. I like the fact that you said texture. Texture, colors, create feeling. Yeah, definitely. So, Joe, we had the opportunity, you, Ryan, and I, as we looked at the mural right here, we walked across campus and we just, I think Ryan got more blown away than anybody else when we looked at the mural because when we went over there, the way the colors pop, the different degree of things that we look at in here that are lost, but when you look through the heaviness of the black area on this, you see all sorts of different things. Yeah, and it was a trip. You walk into the 1400 building, if you walk in from that, uh, let's say almost that like parking lot kind of entrance to your right and up is not where I would expect to be a mural, let alone one like this at Fullerton College. Well, the thing that makes this interesting too is all three of us, because Joe and Ryan just built the new studios for KBPK here, the multimedia studios. And we've talked about having stuff on our wall. We looked at something like this and all three of us looked at each other and said, wouldn't it be lovely to get artists to come on over to our building and be able to say to people at our building, hey, you want to create something? You can come to our walls, create something, and do anything you want because I think that's the fun part of this. You can see the whimsy, you can see the seriousness, you can see different things from a different person's mind every time you look at it. Well, and I don't think we got the full experience when we were out there the other day, Mark. We saw it from the ground floor, we walked halfway up the stairs, and I don't think any of us went to the second floor to get really what could be every viewing angle possible of yeah. that mural. Yeah, and I like that, because I think every level we went to, Ryan went down low, then he went to the next level. Couldn't really shoot anything because of the lamps that were hanging, but I think if he had a clear shot, you'd have looked at this picture from three different perspectives from Ryan shooting it, and you'd have said, wow, it's got multitude of attitudes in it. Okay, so this piece in the case right here, this is a what we call just a didactic of um, artwork that is actually located in the 1400 building. So there's a map right here that tells you where the 1400 building is. And this image right here is an actual mural. I don't know the size of it, it is gigantic. So when you walk into the 1400 building, you look up and you will see this mural. And what I wrote about on this mural by the artist Gronk is the whole experience that we have when we're looking at a mural, especially something like this that's what we call abstract art, because it's not about anything specific. We get to complete the artwork. We get to tell ourselves what we make of this image. So we want everyone to go to the 1400 building and look at this mural and know that it's part of our permanent collection as well. And Gronk was an artist in resident here in 2011. So that's when he created this piece. New Eyes is available and open to the public until October the 11th. You can check out just what meant so much to these students and staff members and why they wanted to put those specific selections from the permanent collection on display for each of us to see. Now if you want more information about the FC Art Gallery, you can check them out online at art.fullcall.edu or you can take a look at their Instagram page. That's at FC Art Gallery. Don't forget, New Eyes is open until October the 11th.